How in the world could these issues with the banks get in the way of you and I buying physical gold and silver? After all, one of the benefits of investing in gold and silver and being your own bank is not having to worry about traditional banks. It's time we really start thinking about banks the same way we think about casinos, meaning they don't build banks or casinos because people win money or increase their money dealing with them. The banks and their immaculate lobbies are built based off of the money that they make from our money. Heck, at least back in the day, a bank would give you a toaster or a calendar every year and maybe a beverage when you stopped by. Now you can barely get a water fountain in the lobby that we paid for. You don't get rich playing in casinos and you can't make money dealing with the bank. Ever since the bank failure SVB, the banking industry has changed in loud and public ways as they have announced that they are tightening lending standards and making it harder for consumers to access credit. At the same time, they've also changed quietly and privately as their fears that bank runs could force another round of banks having to sell assets like bonds prematurely in order to have depositor funds available. This chart says it all as recently we've seen the significant uptick in banks using the Fed's discount window as they try to increase their reserves, which is scary because basically they have to take a loss in order to access this liquidity. This Fred chart really shows how dramatic it has increased as money continues to flow out of banks. Where is it going? From what I can tell, a very large amount of it is flowing into money market funds and accounts as this chart highlights. Banks are absolutely terrified that any moment we will want our money back, thereby making their house of cards that much more unstable. One of the things I've learned over the years is that institutions, and especially large institutions, are very good at protecting themselves and leave with everyone else out in the cold. They almost act like turtles that retreat to the safety of their shell when times get hard and they don't care about who they shut out. This may have real world implications on you as I experienced just this Friday. What does this have to do with stacking? Calm down, I'm getting there. For almost a year, I've been preaching cash is king and many of you have been stacking and keeping cash or dry powder so we are ready for whatever happens because you're my A plus students, of course. I just had to throw that in there. But I also know that not everyone is heeding this warning. We've talked about having liquidity so when opportunities present themselves, you're ready to pounce. Like, let's say you find a great deal of some shipwreck gold that someone needs to sell in a rush. Well, you do what a good old Doc Stacker did Friday morning. I was at a conference in San Diego and I like to look around whenever I travel to see what the local market is doing and maybe find something cool. There it was. I found a nice opportunity, just like we've discussed in this channel. It was my opportunity to take advantage of the illiquidity of someone else, as Rick Rule says. I mean, I was excited, y'all. I couldn't wait to make it happen and then bring the story back to you. I mean, I was already feeling like John Hannibal Smith, you know, from the A-Team. All I needed was a cigar and I was ready to say I love it when a plan comes together. Not so fast, old man. You need cash. So I said to myself, self, you need to go get you some cash. Well, luckily my bank branch was less than 10 miles from my hotel. I called the 800 number and I say, hey, I need to take out about four grand. Is that going to be an issue? We all know that you just can't roll up in the bank and then expect some crazy number like $10,000 because it triggers the Bank Secrecy Act. Plus banks don't have that much cash on hand. By the way, anyone else feel like that is one of the most ridiculous realities that our banks don't have much money or much cash on hand? We'll have to cover that nonsense another day. Back to the story. I jump in the Uber at 9 a.m. because my flight leaves at 2 o'clock, so I have a small window to make this happen. I roll in the bank like, let's do this. And what in the actual... Okay, let's keep it PG. But there was a, like a hundred signs saying to customers, you can only withdraw $2,000 a day from the bank teller. Now this isn't some small mom and pop credit union I'm talking about for the record. And I still can't believe what I'm seeing, especially since I called in advance. So I walk up to the teller and Rihanna's better have my money is already playing in my head. I explained that I called in advance and I needed $4,000. To make a long story short, they said no. That anything over $2,000 requires at least 24 hours notice. Two grand? Y'all know how easy it is to spend two grand? Now, as we say in the black community, I'm hotter than fish grease at this moment, but I can't cut up or say or do anything because I don't look good in orange and I don't have a body for one pieces, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna pause right here for a quick second to calm myself down and shout out my boy Check Stacker, AKA Rob D. I see you, brother. And I wanna thank you for the wonderful letter, the gift, and of course, this very cool sticker. Uh, Y'all can find Check Stacker and the rest of the crew over on Discord. Why Discord? Because the learning doesn't stop. And we've got a great group of folks over there sharing information and having fun. Not to mention, from time to time, I pass along great deals to the community. Two weeks ago, I offered up two quarter ounce gold eagles for $5.50 each, which is about $140 below market price. Also, I want to shout out a lovely couple I met on Friday at a coin show here in Sacramento. Andrew and Mahal Billingsley from Montoya Billingsley Numismatics. And you can find them at local coin shows in Northern California. How do I know they are part of Stackers University community? Because I went to visit their booth and good old Andrew knew my voice. 
So when I said something about YouTube, he turned to Mahal and said, do you know this voice? Then he was like, you're not, you can't be. And I was like, yeah, I'm I'm Dr. Stacker. And if you see Montoya Billingsley and Numa's Matters at a show, you have my permission to buy some BS. I mean, um, boutique silver from them. For the record, don't try to negotiate with Mahal. Almost had to arm wrestle her for these super cool Scottsdale stackers. Meanwhile, Andrew helped old Doc Stacker out on the price on this beautiful 10 ounce Royal Arms White Lion and Unicorn coin. Finally, if you're enjoying this video or this channel, could you please hit the like button to help support my efforts? Thank you very much. Back to my frustrating story. I step out of the bank, I call the 800 number, and I go through all the nonsense, like, what do you need the money for, et cetera. And they literally can't get the branch to increase the amount without someone higher and authorizing it. And of course, that person's unavailable. Now, I'm even hotter than fish grease. I'm hotter than molten lava at this point. Fine, then just increase my ATM daily limit to $2,000, and I'll do four transactions of $500 and get what I need. That's what I said. Oh. I'm sorry, Dr. Stacker, your daily limit is $1,000 for your protection. My protection? I'm thinking, y'all about to need some protection from me. Now, that's what I say in my head because I'm at a bank and I don't look good in orange or jumpsuits and I can't get arrested on a work trip. In the comments, let me know what's hotter than molten lava because I'm pretty sure I was that hot and that upset. I share all that to say, I didn't get the $4,000 I needed and I couldn't make the deal happen and I wasted two hours at the bank. There are a lot of issues and a lot of things that we can discuss, but here are the main points I want you to walk away with and not lose in this story. One, I think this is the beginning of the shenanigans that we're going to see from banks. Two, your liquidity in the form of cash means nothing if you can't access it. I've shared this before, but number three, your cash liquidity has to be in your hands as of right now. We truly have to be our own bank and keep our own reserves because number four, if you're hoping for one last buying opportunity or hoping to take advantage of the illiquidity of others, your plan should not include being able to go to the bank and grabbing as much cash as you need. Number five, call your bank today and not the 800 number, but the closest branch and find out what the daily teller limit is. Ask how high you can increase your daily ATM limit and what is your debit card point of sale maximum. My goal isn't to create hysteria, but awareness. You don't need to run out tomorrow and pull all your cash out of the bank, but you do need to have a plan. For example, here's what I did. I started with the goal of putting $100 between each page of my passport. And I did that by grabbing an extra 40, 60 bucks here and there as I conducted regular transaction. And I, you know what? I never even missed that extra 40 or 50 bucks. And after I filled each page with $100, I increased it to $500 between each page. And after I did that, I started working on my second passport and set the same goal, $100 between each page. And that is something that you absolutely can do slowly and you don't even miss that extra 20, 40 bucks here and there. And over some time, you actually have a good amount of cash stacked up. I'm not sure if we should have ever trusted banks in general, but what is crystal clear is that they do not have our best interests in mind, and we just may be overly relying upon them. Those fancy bank lobbies, just like Las Vegas casinos, are paid for off of our backs and our hard-earned money. Banks are a necessary evil, but we can't allow their illiquidity to become our problem because they have shown that they will protect themselves and their turtle shell only has enough space for them. In the comments section, what changes have you seen with any of your banks? Have you heard any other stories about banks limiting access to funds? What is your plan for liquidity? Or just put an A plus in the grade book because grades are due soon. Always stack smarter and never stop learning.